Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here. So guys, we have full on confirmation that we were right. The entire XRP community and the army were, were right, right? Like we got confirmation of that. Are we surprised by that? No. Are we surprised with the information dropping right now over on Twitter? Yes, 100%. It all started with this video get, getting posted by Digital Asset Investor, right? This confirmed that there was a free pass for Ethereum. You know, they turned a blind eye, if you will. And then we've seen Steven Neryoff respond to this tweet. And he broke it fully down on how this like how exactly did Ethereum even satisfy this magical agency pixie dust? We broke it down in the video recently, um, but it did not stop here. We thought it was going to. It didn't. This tweet almost got one million views. People were looking at this and they were like, wow, this is a shocker, right? Now, before we get into the juiciness, I want to talk to you guys about a few things. One was the XRP community being called conspiracy theorists. Uh, we were being called crazy. Like I even said, like, wait, I thought ETHgate was a conspiracy theory and that all XRP holders are just crazy. Hmm, times are changing because now people are realizing just how real this entire situation has been. And it's funny because this comes from like the Cardano founder, right? Like, remember when he was shutting down ETHgate and saying that like everyone was crazy? Well, we know that we weren't, right? We, we knew from the very beginning of the lawsuit that something was not right. Like if you go back to the time where XRP and Ethereum uh, were doing pretty good, right? Like here you guys have November of uh, 2020. And in fact, if you actually look back here, right? And um, if you actually go to the price changes, sorry, I could not find it. So if you go to the price change here and you go into um, the March of 2020 timeframe to November, you could see that XRP, well, guess what? It was outperforming Ethereum. It was outperforming Ethereum by just over a little bit of like 25% or so. And then all of a sudden, December came around. And this is where XRP got targeted. We got the lawsuit announcement and boom, it shattered that whole theory. From that time on, XRP was only able to do roughly about a 1700% run. Now, this is not like this is nothing, right? Like this is not nothing. This is a 17x. Um, when we look at Ethereum, Ethereum was actually able to do about a 55x return. Now, do you understand why a lot of people thought that, oh, well, $10 was going to be the initial price point? This is a 90x off of those lows. This is what we were waiting on. And we would have outperformed Ethereum, even if we only outperformed Ethereum slightly, right? Say for so, we went to a 55x. We're still talking about a $6 XRP. Which is why we said like XRP and Ripple were targeted at the perfect time in this market to let Ethereum take the wheel. Now, let's go back to this article almost two years ago where it got a little bit of a spotlight over on Nasdaq.com. This was written by Thomas Young uh, for Investor Place. And this is talking about ETHgate 2022, the Ethereum scandal. XRP investors are calling bigger than Enron. And you know, when we look into this, like what is ETHgate all about? Well, first off, we've initially talked about how XRP and Ripple were targeted, right, through the lawsuit. What we do see here, that it's a conspiracy theory. That's what they're calling it, that Ethereum received a free pass from regulators. These critics recently claimed that the SEC allowed Ethereum to move ahead while doing out harsher treatment to um, XRP. Ethereum whales could have possibly created multiple fake identities and accounts, explained one Twitter commenter, to make it look like the Ethereum network and the initial coin offering was truly decentralized when in fact it was manipulated to look more decentralized. And this is the question that everyone has been uh, really kind of looking into. Now, mind you, right, when we actually look into this, the question is, is ETHgate real? Like I've said, the XRP community and even including myself, we know that this was real. And now we have full on confirmation that it is. First and foremost, I have to give a shout out to Utility Theory and many other contributors to this. This is a mind map of ETHgate. This is the corruption. I mean, you have so many players tied to this. You have JP Morgan, you have FTX, you have the SEC. Everyone 
has been tied to this essentially. Like, look at this whole mind map. You have, you guys have Mike Novogratz, for an example, and the list goes on and on. And you even have Cardano and the founder of Cardano. And you have Hester Pierce, you have all the regulators, um, you have Bill Hinman on here. I mean, this is such an incredible mind map. You have to go check it out by Utility Theory. I've told you guys about this. It is a massive, massive mind map of corruption. But outside of this, we have this from Crypto Eddie. Eth Gate, we were right. Johnny Deaton, 81 factual event timeline 2013 to 2023, curated by XRP Sleuth Research, Decentralized Justice. And here we have OG XRP Army News 1, brought that timeline alive, narrated by 18. Listen to the complete narration. Check this out. January 19th, 2019, Joseph Lubin says, we're big friends and fans of the SEC. He says the SEC has introduced a new construct called decentralization into their thinking, and Bitcoin and Ethereum aren't securities. They have not said the same about other tokens like XRP. Lubin claims to know the SEC is not going to find any tokens other than Bitcoin and Ether to be decentralized, dropping Hinman's name as the source of information. The SEC versus Ripple case filed in December 2020 has affected me the same way it's affected thousands of XRP holders in every corner of the world. Together, we share the same disappointment, frustration, and outrage. We've also learned without instruction or prior example how we could contribute to a new form of decentralized justice. This is where we uncovered the facts using social media. We've identified those that broke the law, exposed the bad actors who thought they could operate under a cloak of secrecy. The lessons learned will have a long-term effect on demanding and ensuring transparency for the future. And the problem is, right, is that like all of this has been brought to the spotlight. Like now it's spotlighted. I question if anyone, anyone tied to this is going to be held accountable. Like I wonder if anything's actually going to come from this. I would hope so. Because listen, we have been extremely frustrated. It's not just price action. Like we're not just talking about price action here. We're not just talking about performance. No, we are talking about the sickening damage that was brought upon the retail sector. Right, like for how many, what, two and a half years, the retail sector got completely slaughtered holding XRP. Like, we need these individuals to be held accountable. And over here from Steven Neryoff, this is the big bombshell that got dropped. So, first and foremost, on stage, we do see Crypto Eddie. I'm not going to play this video, it's about six minutes long, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to waste your time. Would you see, hello, Stephen Nerlyoff. Thank you for taking notice of conversations about the ETH ICO. As you said, this was a dangerous area and you took it upon yourself to figure it out legally. You had the former SEC chair chime in. Who and who are the 15,000 participants? Here we have former SEC chair was Joe Grudfest, um, who has integrity, which seems out of fashion. As to the number, I now realize one can't tell the true number of ETH ICO buyers as it was explained by some how whales could disguise their large positions during the ICO. Violation of terms of service against speculative buying? Hard to imagine anyone Ethereum doing this, and if they knew others who did, surely they would have told the SEC Gov regarding concentration of ETH holdings before the Bill Hinman law was enacted. I might have the document versions by the author of the TOS amongst countless documents, recordings, etc., all uh, stored in a number of locations, I may not have knowledge or items of importance given claims. I exaggerated my role, uh, though I guess it's possible I got some info if I was lucky enough to talk to an important co-founder. Either way, I suppose an, uh, an effective way to silence me would be to prosecute publicly, discredit, and ultimately attempt to imprison me. Turns out, this is actually what happened to me for the past four years until I proved the entire case was fabricated from the government's own documents, including the SEC Gov, and got an almost unprecedented dismissal with uh, prejudice, SEC Gov, DOJ, FBI, joint effort, and oddly some familiar Ripple names amongst others, Mark Berger, John Enright, uh, John Daniels, 
When I said dangerous area, I didn't suspect so-called friendly fire traders and treasonous to me, crypto and the country as well. Uh, very interesting and very big um, drop here. And um, when we actually go and look at Steven's profile, he did respond to a tweet, actually. And it was this one. And he says, I have the map. This blew up, right? This blew up because what we've seen, right, within this was Johnny Deaton responding to this tweet from uh, Steven. Let me go back to uh, this tweet from Steven, which he's responding to Crypto Eddie. And um, he's saying, a long time ago, I put out the timeline of indisputable facts and authored the Ethereum Free Pass article published on Crypto Law US. That article and all the facts I shared didn't bring me new friends in the crypto industry. I was labeled a conspiracy theorist for stating facts that to this day have never been refuted or claimed inaccurate. Chris Dixon of A16Z blocked me because I shared the fact that in January 2018, Jay Clayton told him to put together a small working group and produce a memo of what they wanted the SEC to do and to give it to Bill Hinman or similar words to that effort. To be clear, I didn't say or imply that Chris Dixon did anything wrong. I did note, however, that it was clear that Ripple wasn't invited to be part of this handpicked small working group, even though XRP was, at the time, the second largest crypto by market cap. For the most part of 2018, Ethereum was number two and XRP three, but there were moments when XRP overtook Ethereum, including in January of 2018, which is why we say that's why XRP was targeted. Um, sharing a vid video posted by Digital Asset Buy, I pointed out that attorney Lowell Ness claimed that Hinman's speech closely tracked the written or the, the document written uh, by A16Z's attorney. I also pointed out that the Ethereum uh, was the only token referenced in the safe harbor written by Ness. Of course, I also pointed out that the Hinman speech was paid, or Hinman himself was paid millions by sharing profits from his firm that was a member of the EEA, the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance, um, and was also pushing an IPO of a company that sold ETH mining equipment. I said that these massive conflicts violated 18 USC 208. Later, after being called a conspiracy theorist, we learned that Hinman was told by SEC ethics to stop violating the law, yet he continued to do so. The Hinman emails and his uh, deposition testimony proved many of the things that we had said for two years. Crypto Law US, using the efforts of the XRP sleuths, created a chronological video timeline posting some of the relevant involved players' video clips. The one thing that the public community has not had, however, is a true insider who is there and knows everything and has the receipts to prove it. It appears one of them, Stephen Neryoff, is staring to or starting to um, speak out. By the way, don't forget that Joe Grudfest, after helping Ethereum through Neryoff, was the only one who wrote to Clayton and the SEC pleading with them not to file the lawsuit claiming XRP was a security. There isn't a person in the world that can challenge the credibility of Joe Grudfest. He essentially said giving Ethereum a free pass and attacking XRP was morally, ethically, and legally wrong. I have a feeling things are about to get interesting from my research and the research of my good friends, Steven Neryov might just know where all the bodies are buried. If he does and kept a copy of the map showing the location, it's about to get real interesting. And that's where we see uh, Neryov responding to this tweet saying, I have the map. Wow. <laughs> and, and by the way, like, here's, the, here's the mind map getting posted by Utility Theory again. But here we have, I usually don't share private conversations, but I reached out to Steven Neryoff to see if he would come on Crypto Law US. I warned him, however, that unlike the SEC or him in, I would not give him a free pass on Crypto Law, as I would ask him tough questions such as the disguised whales and who must have made millions from it. I'll be honest, I assume Neryoff was one of them and warned him that if he came on my show, I wouldn't dance around the topic. He told me that he turned down the ETH offered to him and that he actually spent his own money because he believed in what they were attempting to do. I said, nonsense, whatever. He then responded that I, of all people, should understand why someone would do something he believed in for free. Although I admit it that that was a good response, I remained skeptical. Under an agreement of confidentiality, he showed the proof of his claim, which involved emails with as high up the ETH chain of command as you can get. At some point, I hope to have him on Crypto Law US. And um, this is getting real interesting, guys. Real interesting bombshells. And then we got this. 
So Ashley Prosper one quoted that same tweet that Johnny Deaton is quoting. What do you see? When I first read the second Stephen uh, Neryoff post, I failed to acknowledge the significance of his use of the word treasonist. That is a very serious accusation. And if Stephen has proof of his betrayal, it is his duty as an American to expose it. Rest assured, the XRP Army has been and will continue to do its part to raise awareness, bring accountability, and balance the scales of justice. And, well, here we have from Michael uh, Scotto. My client, Stephen Neryoff, fought and won the battle of a lifetime. Steve has been advised to follow proper procedures and is fully committed to making all of his facts known at a time and manner that serves the interest of justice and the people. Very, very interesting here. And over here from Johnny Deaton, he's responding back saying, I'm getting a lot of messages asking what this means. I'm speculating a bit, but as a lawyer, I suspect that Stephen Neryoff's desire to tell what he knows after what he's been through may have gotten ahead of the legal advice he was likely receiving his lawyer, um, who is a real trial lawyer, understandably likely advised him to temporarily stand down proper procedures could mean anything from speaking with authorities, e.g. whistleblower, uh, whistleblower or potential litigation, etc., I've always said that one day we will get the full truth. Today is one day closer. Guys. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So this is this is very exciting. Listen, this is big. I don't I don't wish for Ethereum to get completely targeted. I don't wish for, you know, Ethereum to do something like this. No. That's not what we're we're here for. What we want is accountability. We want the proof to be out there. We want things to be undisputable. We want people to realize, like, listen, for two and a half years, XRP was in the most miserable spot. It has not made an all-time high, and I bring this up quite a bit. I, I, I bring it up often on this channel. XRP has not made an all-time high in over 2,000 days, almost 2,070 days since an all-time high. Mind you, it took Ethereum only, only 1,127 days to make an all-time high. And it's even today, going all the way back to 2018, at an all-time high. We have not cleared the 2017-2018 all-time high. And like I said, XRP has been the number two asset for a very long time up until this lawsuit. It was bouncing back and forth, but XRP is the only asset in the space to really kind of push the realm of possibly becoming the number one asset. Ethereum topped out at nearly a $600 billion market cap. So is it crazy to think that XRP would have been $6 during the, the 2021 run? No. Absolutely not. And this is why so many XRP holders are so pissed off. This is why we are so frustrated. This is why when we see things like this, finally seeing the light of day and having someone that has the insider information finally speaking out. Yeah, this is a bombshell. So with that being said, I look forward to seeing what happens from this. This is going to be very exciting. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, though. If you did enjoy the video, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and Jennifer Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Peace out.